you ever just get an idea in your head and then it just grows and grows and grows? Well, yeah, that's what happened with this one. I started out looking for inspiration for another piece I was getting ready to work on. I'm scouring Pinterest in the internet and Facebook groups and I all of a sudden it popped in my head I wanted to paint an octopus. It wasn't going to work on that dresser. And then I won this at an auction. I paid a dollar for it. I was so excited. It was perfect. I'm looking at it and it's flat and I can do my octopus. This thing is filthy and I don't even want to bring it in the house yet. There's a ton of spiders and spider webs and we've just gross nest. So that will be where I'm starting. I'm going to get rid of the spiders and the spider webs. I'm going to sand it. I'm going to clean it. And I think I saw somewhere I have to fix. Yep. Right here. Some veneer I need to fix. We're driving to Disney. It's a really long drive. It was like 13 hours. And in the car, I just start thinking. And all these things start coming in my head. Thinking all these things I can do. And the more I looked at this, the more I was like, yeah, this looks like a submarine and that's what it's going to be. If you are new here, welcome, welcome. My name is Crystal and this video is part of an open collaboration. I am hosting the collaboration is an invite to everyone and anyone who would like to join. The theme for this round is the ocean. So use your imagination and think out of the box and just do something super fun. For this open collaboration, just you're just basically going to take an antique piece of furniture or vintage. Sometimes it's hard to find something that is antique. And then just do something unique, ocean themed with it. The date that the video is due is on May 25th. So once you have your video scheduled to upload or upload, make sure in the description box or in the title, you use the hashtag, hashtag unique antique challenge, and that should automatically upload your video into the playlist. But please make sure you let me know that the video is uploaded and then I will go ahead and I will link your channel up into the playlist so I make sure your video gets seen. No worries if you can't get your video done by May 25th, a few days after is totally fine as well. I started with the toasted poppy seed as my base coat and then I added some of the blue harbor around the edges so that way when I sanded back my yellow milk paint those colors would pull and show through as well as this milk paint is sort of transparent it's not really thick so when I did put it on I was able to sort of layer it so that the colors that I first put on would kind of peek through. I wanted a really rusted looking submarine so I used some copper colored paint and some rust pigment from Debbie's DIY product line and it's like a powder just like a like a pigmented powder that you can kind of rub on and I mixed a little bit in with my paint my copper colored paint and I just brushed it on with a small artist brush around the edges and on the hinges and basically on all the areas that I thought maybe a rust would start to form. I took a piece of sidewalk chalk and I just drew my octopus onto my cabinet. And then I used some of Debbie's 
DIY clay base paint uh, and I painted my octopus. I used two colors. Uh, these were actually like mist tint paints that I bought at a discounted rate from Debbie's website. So the colors you might not be able to find, but one is called Pale Avery, and it's just basically a very with a lighter color, and then I used Mossy Bayou Green, which is also a mist tint, so you might not be able to find those on Debbie's website, and I just kind of mixed the two and blended them so that I would get highlights and lowlights on my octopus. This just kind of gives it detail without trying too hard, I guess you could say. My husband says to me, he always says to me, what are you thinking about? I can see the wheels turning. I must have smoke that comes out of my ears or something. Cause I will just get in these like little dazes where I'm just thinking and it, my my brain is just churning and I'm trying to work all the things out in my head all the things I need to do or all the things I want to do so then I got to thinking I needed rusty rivets all over it so I ordered some embroidery tacks and they're really hard to hammer into wood especially hard wood like this so I took a wire cutter and I snipped off the little part that nails in and I just ended up using E6000 glue to apply them and to hold them into place. So to make my rivets rusty, I basically did the same thing as I did around the edges of my cabinet. I took my yellow milk paint and I dabbed it all onto my embroidery tacks and I took some of my copper paint and some of the rust pigment and just tapped it all on there to make them look like they were rusty. And then I was thinking, oh my gosh, I need portholes. I have to put portholes on this. What submarine does not have portholes? So I ordered some wood circles. Uh, they were eight inch circles. And then I ordered a bunch of random smaller circles. I believe the ones that I used around the mirror were one inch. And I ordered round mirrors that were actually peel and stick, but I ended up applying them on with some wood glue just to make sure they adhered. I stained my wood circles with a carbon gray wood stain and I glued the smaller wood circles onto the large wood circle with E6000 glue. I made sure everything was evenly spaced and I tried gluing the mirrors on with E6000 glue but I totally ruined my first set of mirrors as there was a chemical reaction on the mirror part and it got all crackly. So I do not recommend using E6000 glue on the mirror. So then my husband and I were sitting there looking at it and talking about it and trying to figure out what else I could do. And he said, oh, you should put the word ahoy on it or something. And I was like, oh my gosh, yeah, that's a really good idea. And I said, what is, what about, what is the name of that submarine? Is it USS something? He said, oh, the SS Minnow. I said, oh yeah, I could do that. The USS Minnow. And I've made stencils before by hand cutting them out. So I was like, okay, yeah, I'm going to do that. If you guys would like a detailed tutorial on how I make my own stencils, let me know down in the comments. I would be happy to create a video to show you how I do that. It's definitely not for the faint of heart, but if you don't have one of those 
circuit machines that automatically cut stencils or if you're on a budget and you want to do something simple and specific it's a great way to go and make your own stencils something that is going to be perfect for your project and you just proceed the same way you do with any other stencil and I like to tape my stencils down with painters tape so that way it doesn't slide or shift and then you can use either a stiff brush or a sponge and tap your paint on gently so that way it doesn't bleed underneath the stencil and it's just that easy it's the same as using a stencil you've purchased from the store or you made with your circuit machine. Was a lot of work and um, it was fun. I had a lot of fun doing it. The collaboration for the next video will be let's do insects, let's do bugs, let's dedicate this radio cabinet that was full of spiders to our next collaboration challenge. Let's do the theme bugs, insects. This should be fun. I can't wait to see what you all do and I hope you all have a great day. Please remember to like and subscribe. Bye.